Oh, you could have been a good girl But instead you chose a real world Yeah, you've always been a savage Oh, you've always been a bad chick Farvados is the strongest demon lord of all time. That's why he doesn't have any friends and feels life is boring. After careful consideration, he decides to reincarnate himself. However, in the current era, people are miserably lacking in knowledge about magic. That means he will probably become a demon lord again. Reincarnated as Ard Meteor, he is now just a commoner. After 10 years of reincarnation, Ard thinks this is the right time for him to build friendships. Seeing a group of children playing outside, he is about to say hello, but they run away as soon as they see him. Not giving up, Ard goes out into town and sees a few girls. He intends to start a conversation with them, but since this is his first time, he is too nervous. Ard, who was once a demon lord but now couldn't befriend a child. When he returns home, he meets the head of the village, Allhide. Seeing that Ard is upset about building up friendships, Allhide shows him a simple way which is to be a kind and polite man. This will help him build friendships naturally. When Ard seems to understand something, he immediately goes to practice it. But theory is one thing, and practice is another. He is shunned by other children, which causes him to lose faith in life. From somewhere, Ard hears a girl's cry for help. He runs there and sees a little girl using magic to burn a wolf. After the wolf is destroyed, the girl turns around and sees Ard. Ard also moves closer with the desire to befriend her. But for some reason, she no longer believes in friendship, so she refuses him. That girl's name is Irina, and she is the daughter of the head of village Allhide. So from that day on, Ard kept following her. Knowing that Irina likes roses, he takes a large bouquet of flowers to her house to please her but is flatly rejected. That night, as usual, Irina vented her anger at the monsters in the forests. At home, Ard still couldn't understand why. After trying all sorts of methods, it still didn't work on Irina. Suddenly, there is a strange noise outside, it is goblins pouring out of the dungeon. Irina is still in the mountains, so Ard goes there to look for her. She is surrounded by goblins. She thinks about being betrayed by her friends, so she puts down her sword and wants to give up. But Ard appears. He uses thunder to destroy them. Next, he uses demon eyes to destroy the remaining goblins. Irina angrily asks, why did you save me? She is betrayed by her friends and now no longer wants to live, but Ard comforts her. He reaches out his hand to befriend her and says that he has also been betrayed by a friend. So he understands her feelings and promises not to let her go through that feeling again. Touched by Ard's sincerity, Irina accepts his friend request. A few years later, Ard wakes up to see Irina lying on his bed. He wakes up with a start when she informs him that they have been recruited into the Magic Academy. Ard and Irina go to the academy to apply for admission and are very warmly welcomed by the headmaster because he learned that they could destroy hundreds of goblins. So they are exempted from the practical exam, but still have to take the theory exam. A few days later, they come to see the results of the theory exam. Irina gets a perfect score, but Ard gets the lowest score in the academy. However, Ard still passes the exam. The headmaster explains that although Ard's entire answer was wrong, it was only wrong with the current operating system mindset, and his answers involved magic that had been lost since time immemorial. Not even heroes or magicians can think of them. The headmaster happily reveals that Ard, in front of everyone, is a genius, and the son of great heroes, causing a girl at school to notice Ard. Thanks to the headmaster's enthusiasm, Ard becomes a popular idol at school. But besides that, there are still some students who don't like Ard very much. They even brazenly bully a girl in the class, which angers Irina, but he is still arrogant and introduces himself as Elroldal Spencer, the son of the famous Spencer Duchy family, and the red-haired girl is his slave. Seeing that, Ard can't stand it and makes him apologize to the girl. Elraldo is arrogant and challenges Ard to a duel. If Ard wins, then Elraldo does as Ard asks. Irina sees that and stops Ard. As far as she knows, Elraldo is currently the youngest magician, possessing so many types of magic that he has been awarded medals. At this moment, the voice of a girl makes Ard sweat. Her name is Olivia, and she is one of the top generals of Demon Lord Varvados, the legendary apostle. If she knows that Ard is the Demon Lord, she will definitely kick him for the crime of voluntarily abdicating and reincarnating. Seeing Ard is interesting, Olivia agrees to let Ard and Elraldo have a duel. They go out into the schoolyard, and Elraldo is still arrogant and despises Ard. But after the first attack, he has to think again when he sees that Ard didn't dodge without taking any damage. Seeing that, Elraldo continues to use Mega Flare to attack Ard. Ard is unharmed after that attack because it was just a regular flare. 
Araldo just used another name to fool people. Ard feels that the magic is being offended. If you still don't know, let me show you what a real Mega Flare is. Having said that, Ard simultaneously activates two types of magic that create very strong energy that makes Elraldo beg in fear to surrender. Olivia is surprised that Ard is able to use dual magic. It is not easy to cast two different types of magic simultaneously in this era. She becomes increasingly suspicious of Ard's true identity. The next morning is the actual battle class, and the female students all want Ard to join their party. But now, Ard and Irina notice the red-haired girl from yesterday. Seeing that the girl still hasn't found a party, Irina invites her to join their party. Their mission this time is to go down to the basement to destroy the B-rank monsters that everyone is afraid of. But for Ard and Irina, this is only a small matter. Seeing that Ginny is still a bit timid, Ard decides to teach her how to use magic. Seeing a beast approaching, he uses script magic to destroy it. He says it is a quick cast spell, and it is the same magic he created that shocked the two girls. Thanks to Ard's guidance and Ginny's efforts, she is able to defeat the strongest boss of the third floor. Of course, Ard's party will get the maximum score. The next morning, the headmaster wants Ard to join the students' battle in front of the queen, but Ard refuses for fear of revealing his true identity. That night, teacher Jessica interrupts an argument between Ginny and Irina, saying that they could work things out in this tournament. If they win, Ard's reputation will become even more famous, and he may become the student's teacher. During the student's battle, Irina's match quickly takes place. Ard doesn't want to become more famous, so he is praying that Irina will lose. But when she sees Ard's praying face, she is determined not to let him down. She quickly dodges the opponent's magic and draws magic circles in the air. Her opponent is electrocuted to the point of unconsciousness. Irina wins this round. She walks out and meets Ginny. The two promise to meet in the final round. The final round has just begun when the demons appear and attack everyone in the arena. The magicians that are capable of fighting split up to act. Irina and Ginny also participate in the fight very fiercely. But suddenly, a very powerful golem appears. Even if Irina and Ginny were combined, they could not defeat it. At this moment, Irina's father appears. He uses storm magic to smash the golem. However, Irina's father is suddenly stabbed from behind. The one who did that is Jessica Sensei. Her true identity is Frenzied Dragon King Elzert. Everything that happened today went according to her plan. Her real goal is to kidnap Irina. Ginny immediately attacks Elzert and tells Irina to leave the place. But Elzert is too strong. Just as Ginny is about to be killed, Irina rushes forward and threatens Elzert that she will kill herself if Ginny dies. Elzert then takes Irina away in the presence of Ginny. At the infirmary, Allhide is saved by Ard just in time. Frenzied Dragon King Elzard was a monster that, thousands of years ago, almost destroyed the world. But no matter how strong it is, Ard doesn't care and is determined to save Irina. Elsewhere, Elzard is planning to use Irina's blood as a sacrifice to the evil god. Her goal is to revive the evil god so he can destroy the world. While the monster is about to eat Irina, Ard appears. Instantly, he casts nine types of magic at once to wipe out all monsters. Irina is rescued. It has been a long time since Elzard has felt this excited again. She adds that the Allhide family carries within them the blood of the evil god. However, Ard doesn't care. He just needs to know that Irina is kinder and braver than anyone in the world and totally deserving of love and respect. After hearing Ard's words, Elzard gets angry and attacks him. However, her thunder magic doesn't work against Ard. On the contrary, she falls into Ard's magic trap. Ard throws his spear at Elzard, which makes her fly out of sight. It isn't over yet, Elzard transforms into her dragon form and attacks Ard once more. With no other choice, Ard uses the power of the lonely demon Lord Varvados, summoning spirit Lydia to negate Elzard's attack. Elzard asks in amazement, who are you? Ard replies that he is just a commoner. He transforms Lydia into a golden sword and sends her flying into the sky to challenge Elzard. Lydia's sword has the ability to analyze and locate Elzard's attacks, making it easy for Ard to dodge and counterattack. He orders Lydia to transform to level 2. Humanity and spirit merge. Lydia is like an AI, analyzing all of the opponent's magic and nullifying it, causing them to explode as soon as it is cast. Analysis, interpretation, and control are Ard's true powers. He can read Elzard's mind. Both are about to cast their strongest magic. Ard activates Ultimatum Zero to hit Elzard directly, creating a terrifying explosion. Elzard is completely annihilated. In another place, a girl has been trying to train herself to become stronger for many years. When she decides to return home, she realizes that everything around her has changed. It turns out that she is so passionate about training that she forgets that 3,000 years have passed, 
Not three years as she thought. Her name is Slyfy and she is Lydia's younger sister. Suddenly, a stranger tells her, if you want news about Lydia, go find Ard, who is the reincarnated demon Lord Varvados. In the principal's office, they are discussing the celebration of the 100th anniversary. He intends to put on a show in addition to the Sword King Battle Tournament as their main attraction. Slyfy suddenly bursts into Ard's classroom and says that Ard is the reincarnated demon Lord Varvados. Ard is now very confused and pretends not to know anything. Olivia is also curious about Slyfy's words, so she allows Slyfy to challenge Ard. The match starts. After all, Slyfy has been training in swordsmanship for 3,000 years. Her level of swordsmanship is now comparable to Ard's. She fights while mocking Ard's swordsmanship, making him angry and fighting seriously. However, Slyfy doesn't accept defeat. In anger, she summons the demise Argus sword and attacks Ard. Olivia shouts, enough. It turns out that the other students were affected by the poison from the sword and fainted. Irina rushes over to give Slyfy a slap on the head and scolds Slyfy. This personality of Irina reminds Slyfy of her sister. Even Ard has a feeling that Irina and Lydia are quite similar. Slyfy cries like a baby and is comforted by Irina. Ever since then, Slyfy has always adored Irina. The play is about the demon Lord Varvados defeating the evil god. Ard will take on the role of Varvados. Irina will take on the role of Lydia. As for the role of being an evil god, no one wanted to take it on. But Slyfy claims to take the role because she wants revenge on Ard. The school's anniversary has arrived, and Ard and Irina are on patrol when they hear an explosion nearby. It turns out Slyfy is attacking a man because she thought he was a demon. At this time, Olivia comes over and says that he is a staff member of the restaurant that she often goes to. Ard tells Slyfy not to go on patrol but to help with the upcoming class performance. Olivia says that in this Sword King battle tournament, she will also participate because Ard is participating. Ard does not understand what is going on when Olivia says she submitted the form to announce Ard's participation. The Sword King battle tournament begins. Unexpectedly, the two swordsmen in the early final are Olivia and Ard. It's called an early final because one of them is likely to be the champion of this tournament. When Olivia is seriously fighting, Ard accidentally blows Olivia away with his magic. As Ard broke the law of using magic, he is disqualified from the tournament, and Olivia was blown away and didn't return in time, so she is also disqualified. In the next match between Irene and Ginny, they fight while arguing about who will be by Ard's side. This causes the audience to enthusiastically discuss Ard's identity. After a bit of a struggle, Irina is the winner. The play about the demon lord, Farvados, is about to begin. Everyone in the class seems to be quite nervous, especially Irina, so Ard goes over to cheer her up, making her feel better. The play begins. Everyone in the class plays their role very well. The play is a great success, but then Slyfy sees someone like Lydia, so she runs after her and discovers she isn't. At this time, the masked man appears again. The next morning is the final match between Irene and Slyfy. Before the match starts, Slyfy tells Ard that she wants him to go to the old tree tonight. The final match is about to begin with the excitement of the audience, but just as the match begins, Slyfy defeats Irina in one blow, surprising the audience. Slyfy is the winner in this tournament and receives a copy of the Holy Sword. That night, Ard goes to the old tree to meet Slyfy and sees her holding Lydia's Holy Sword. She unseals the Holy Sword and summons her demise Argus Sword. Without a moment's hesitation, she charged at Ard with utter hatred. It turns out that the masked man has altered Slyfy's memories, creating a partially false memory that Ard had killed Lydia, causing Slyfy to consider Ard an enemy. The masked man watches the match from above and is excited that the upcoming play will be very good. Slyfy continues to follow Ard and slashes at Ard's back, causing him to fall to the ground. At this point, Irina appears and stops her, but Slyfy rushes to cut Irina's barrier. Ginny also supports Irene. However, they are no match for Slyfy. Ard transforms into Demon Lord Varvados and tells Slyfy to stop. Seeing that form, Slyfy becomes even more enraged and charges at Ard with more force. Suddenly, Lydia's voice rings out, causing Slyfy to stop. The masked man appears and knocks Slyfy out. He wants to revive his master and considers Ard's existence dangerous. He takes Slyfy's two swords and rushes to cut Ard, but when he turns his back, Ard cuts off one of his arms. He jumps high and intends to destroy the kingdom, but the sword he is holding is against him. Ard picks up the sword and kills the masked man. When Ard reaches the holy sword, Lydia's soul appears. She tells Slyfy not to blame Varvados because he did nothing wrong. 
then her soul returns to the Holy Sword. The next morning, the class is on a camping trip when suddenly Ard, Ginny, and Irina are transported to a strange space. A boy appears and claims to be a god. The boy says that being is trying to upset that order, trying to transcend those laws and alter the world. The god wants them to destroy that being for him. They are then transported to the past. This is the reign of demon Lord Varvados. At this moment, a strange noise caught their attention. A demi-human girl is being chased by a monster. Ard quickly uses magic to save the girl. At this point, Olivia appears and thanks Ard for saving her subordinate. They then join the army of demon Lord Varvados. Although Olivia desperately wants them to go to the front lines to fight the demons, Ard wants to enter the support and research unit to keep Ginny and Irina safe. There they meet Verda, the commander of the weapons research unit. Ard tells Verda that they are from the future, much to Rida's curiosity. At this time, Slyphy and Lydia also stop by the place, making Ard a bit nervous when he sees Lydia again. Lydia sees Ginny's two watermelons and immediately invites her to the mansion. Ard sees this and separates them, which angers Lydia, who challenges him to a duel. The duel begins. The two only use physical attacks to fight. They fight from morning to night but still cannot win or lose. After the duel, Lydia grows to like Ard even more, and she says she needs his strength. During the recent battle with the demon race, a demon general attacks Ard's support unit, and he is instantly defeated by Ard with ease. Because of his contribution to defeating the general of the demon race, Ard is able to meet Varvados. Here they learn that Varvados is not the demon lord as history records. This means that history has been changed by someone. After returning, Verda tells them that the demon lord is another person, not Varvados. He appeared about three years ago and took over the great land of humanity. Not even Varvados could defeat him. At this moment, Ard realized that that being that God had mentioned was the demon lord of this world. At this time Lydia calls Ard with her to attack the Mavillas the Curse King. Hearing that name, Ard feels worried because Mavillas is the one who made him kill Lydia. When they arrive, they face the undead army, but with just one skill, Ard wipes them out. He vows not to let that history repeat itself again. When they go inside, they discover that Mavillas has been killed by the Demon Lord. The Demon Lord says that he will aim for the land they wanted to occupy, and this is taken as a declaration of war by the Demon Lord. Then Varvados holds a meeting to prepare for the attack to punish the Demon Lord. When Ard returns to his room, the Demon Lord suddenly appears. He takes off his mask, much to Ard's surprise because he is another version of him from a parallel world. The Demon Lord always tried to save Lydia but failed. He wants Ard to join him to save Lydia. He gives Ard three days to think, then leaves. The next morning, while having breakfast with everyone, Ard looks very sad, so Lydia takes him for a walk. While walking, Ard asks Lydia, if you had to sacrifice everything to regain something you lost, someone precious, what would you do? Lydia doesn't answer, but she leads Ard to an abandoned city where only demons live. The spirits that died here appear and surround Lydia with hatred. It turns out that the people of this city used to block the army's advance and often ambush them, so Lydia decided to wipe them out to ensure the safety of her comrades. She always thinks of herself as a murderer and wants to die bravely. In the evening, they return to the mansion, and Lydia prepares presents for Ginny and Irene, which are two hairpins. The campaign to subjugate the demon lord begins. The four heavenly kings, along with Lydia and Slyphy, also go to the battle. At this time, Ard goes to meet the demon lord in another place. He says he won't save Lydia, because she wants to die in a way that atones for her sins in the end. Feeling that he doesn't have the same ideals, the demon lord rushes to attack Ard. But no matter how they attacked, they still couldn't win or lose. At this point, the demon lord reveals that the reason he chose to meet Ard coincided with the day the army attacked. At Lydia's mansion, Latima comes to inform them that Ard is in need of their help. She says that the demon lord possesses immortality because he separated his soul from his body. As long as the soul is intact, the demon lord's body will be immortal. So she wants them to break into the demon lord's palace to destroy his soul. Upon entering the demon lord's palace, they see the demon lord's soul, and Irina and Ginny intend to destroy it. But they fall into a magic trap. It turns out this is Latima's plan. The demon lord shows Art an image of Irene and Ginny being captured. If Ard agrees to join his army, he will release them. However, Ginny and Irene use the magic that Ard taught them to escape the trap. When Latima summons the demons, Lydia suddenly appears. It turns out that the two hairpins Lydia had given them were capable of monitoring their current state. Lydia instantly knocks out Latima and wipes out the demons, and destroy the demon lord's soul. 
Thus, the demon lord loses his immortality. They rush into each other and remember the past. It turns out that Varvatos had signed an armistice with the demon race and let them own all the land here. Lydia didn't agree with Varvatos' decision, so she went to the demons to destroy them. She was then cursed, and Varvatos was forced to kill her. Because of the hatred of Lydia's death, Varvatos wiped out the demon race and unified the country. Back in the present, they continue to fight. At this moment, the demon lord jumps up and stabs Ard's body. At this moment, Lydia's spirit appears and grabs the demon lord's arm. Ard takes this opportunity to slash at the demon lord's body, causing him to lose a lot of blood. Saving Lydia is right, but what he was doing was completely wrong. Finally, Ard stabs the sword straight into the demon lord's body to end his life. Having successfully destroyed that being, they prepare to return to the present world. At this moment, Varvato's army announces that the demon army is retreating. Ard, Ginny, and Irene wake up on the camping trip. 